Welcome back. Thank you for staying with ENCA. Now, NGO Lawyers for Human Rights is taking the Home Affairs Department to court over blocked IDs. The Institute says parents uh, with blocked IDs are unable to register their children's births or help them get their own IDs. Uh, let's speak now to Home Affairs Minister Dr. Aron Motswaledi. Uh, he says the legal action has um, actually uh, driven them to make some uh, sort of decisions. And Minister, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. Uh, we know that about 1.8 million IDs were unblocked since May, uh, you know, the, the NGOs are saying that this is as a result of the, uh, of the court case. Uh, you were forced to do this because they were taking you to court. What's your response to that? Minister, uh, just to, to confirm if you can still hear us. Oh. Sorry, sorry, I was muted. I was muted. <laughs> no sorry. problem, Minister. So, according to the NGOs sorry. and friends of the court that have taken you, uh, or the department rather, to court for blocked IDs, uh, we know that statistically the department has said that about 1.8 million blocked IDs were unblocked since May this year. And the NGOs are of the view that this happened because of their uh, lawsuit against the department. What's your response? No, they may say so because it makes them feel very good. But if you check our records, and we do have them, we've been discussing this issue for the past two years for the simple reason that the process or the act of blocking IDs is not provided for in the act because the act is very silent. But the process sometimes is necessary. So we've been battling with it and we agreed that uh, we, we have to unblock IDs, but unfortunately, myself, we are still unable to unblock all of them, especially those which fall uh, under six categories. So it's not a policy or principle that we have mm. done so, but we are forced by, by, by circumstances, which I would like to explain to you if you give me just two minutes. Can I go on? Sure, Minister. <laughs> yeah, firstly, when you meet somebody who's clearly an illegal immigrant and they purport to be having a South African ID, you have got to block it because you don't know what they are going to do with it until you investigate and ascertain yourself that indeed they are not illegal immigrants because they might have uh, acquired it fraudulently with this corruption that sometimes is happening within home affairs. Then there is an issue of duplicates. There are people, uh, uh, Maseo, especially in, in our African tradition, who are named after somebody they've got very identical names and say names and everything. And sometimes it confuses Home Affairs official. I'm not blaming those clients, but I've seen sometimes it confuses Home Affairs officials and they give a, a, an identical ID to the same person. Yes. Or you find uh, uh, the same person, I mean, two people sharing the same ID because they share everything uh, in terms of their names. Or one person having multiple IDs for one reason or the other. In that case, we flag them. It's not really broken. We flag them. Mm -hmm. We tag them so that when the person appears, they can immediately come to home affairs and we correct this. For instance, those who have got duplicate IDs, they won't have duplicate fingerprints. So we just have to bring them in, check their fingerprints and separate them. And that's why we really take them. Then we have got people, about 7,000 of them, mm. who are it's from Namibia. Namibia issue. When mm. South Africa, yes, yeah, the Namibia issue, because we agreed with Namibia that we send their records of people, because we, we gave them a choice, by the way. Remember, Namibians were part of South Africa. Mm. When Namibia became a different country, we gave them a choice to either take Namibian citizenship or remain with South African citizenship. There are those who have decided to keep both, and we have just discovered that they are getting benefits in both countries as citizens of both. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, there are 7,000. When we come across them, we take them so that uh, they can come and we correct the issue. They must make one choice. They can't have both. And the majority of this blog, which now amount to 702,000, about 500 are disduplicated. And it's very easy to solve them when people come in. Yeah. The fourth, yes, are bigamists, where you find a person married to two different people using different names. And it's, mm. it's done mostly by men. 
Yes, and then we flag it so that we come and deal with this biochemical issue. Then there are people who are under investigation by the counter-corruption unit of the department. And we take them so that the counter-corruption unit can see that uh, they are investigating. This is the person who are investigating and the matter has not been resolved. Then the right. others are those who are South Africans overseas. They have applied for South African documentation, but mm -hmm. they brought incomplete, incomplete documents. Uh, and the embassy start peering us. And so we also take them to show that this person is staying overseas, is a South African, but has not yet given us enough information for us to give them documentation. Right. We take them until they bring such information. All right, Minister. I just want to ask about two of those categories. Uh, firstly, the South African Namibia uh, issue. Namibia got uh, independence from South Africa uh, on the 21st of March 1990. What's taken so long? Is the problem with us or with Namibia, or is the problem that we're not finding these people on, who are now benefiting from both countries? And if that's a yes, how do we know they're benefiting from one country? And then, secondly, the duplicate ID numbers. Isn't that a home affairs mistake? Uh, if it is, why are people suffering because of a home affairs mistake? Well, let me start with a lot. It's, I don't yeah. know why you call it suffering. It's a mistake. Because if you don't you have an correct. ID, you can't, you can't move on with your life. You can't get a job. You can't apply for, for things. If you're in matric, for instance, you can't even be resulted. Yeah, but, but if you want to do all those things, if your ID is tagged, then they will immediately tell you, that go to home affairs immediately. The taking is a call that, please, there's a mistake on your ID, come. It's not a punishment. Come, let's correct the mistake. I mean, what makes it so difficult, Marcelo, that we make it a, a, a big issue of punishment? We are just saying, please come. For instance, those who usually uh, uh, use banks, they come quickly because the bank will send them. The problem is those, Marcelo, who, when they took an ID, gave us an address which no longer exists and we can't trace them, and they don't find any use for their ID. They don't go to a bank, they don't go to SASA, mm. they don't go to school clinic or anywhere. But those who will go to those institutions will discover immediately when they arrive that there's something wrong and they come to home affairs we correct. So I'm not sure why it's called a punishment because we can't live with a mistake when we know it's a mistake and not correct it. Mm. And the Namibia issue, I'll, I'll come to the mistake part, uh, Minister, in terms of the arguments of, the, of, of, of what the uh, organizations are saying. But the Namibia part, is the issue with us, with them, or not being able to trace these 7,000-odd people? Well, if they don't appear, if mm. they don't appear anywhere, it's, so it's, 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 it's with them because we want them to come and make a choice. It means they never made a choice. And we don't want to, 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 to take away their identity without them making a, a choice. And as long as they don't appear within home affairs, we do have a problem. Mm, and that's why you flag it, okay? And you do explain that even though it's nothing that yeah. uh, is provided in the actual act, it's something that we have to do, especially with the problems that we have in South Africa. Just very lastly, Minister, uh, the um, organizations that uh, uh, have taken the department to court, we've spoken to them, uh, and they're saying that they've heard you say that it's quite an easy process. You just go to a home affairs department and you provide proof um, in terms of uh, whether your ID was flagged, etc. And the home affairs department can just take your, as you're explaining now, your fingerprints, everything and it's something that is sorted. They're saying that there's some, uh, there's ask from home affairs officials that is sometimes, uh, you know, uh, impossible. Some of them are saying that, for instance, uh, they are asked to provide their parents' IDs and they don't have IDs because their parents didn't have IDs and maybe their parents, uh, you know, can't provide them with that. What do we do in situations like that if they do exist indeed? Well, they exist every day, even for mm. those whose IDs haven't block, been blocked, Marcelo. You do get people who are above the age of 15 who don't have any identification. Yeah. So it's not about blocking. They simply don't have any identification and they want it. And we have to start getting parental IDs and all that. In that case, we even include, involve social workers. We bring social workers in. We, we search in clinics, we search in hospitals in order to correct that. So maybe when they say it's a, it's a tedious process, it's because we might be forced to go and search for records elsewhere. Mm. Uh, and, and, and maybe that's why it may take time. Now, 
when you say NGO says uh, 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 we are saying it's just as easy as that, we wanted to unblock all these 702 when we did the 1.8 million myself. But the banks want us. They really paid, and they've even written an affidavit in support. They've done a calculation that if we just unblock without finding out exactly who are these people and what are they all about, if they've got bank accounts, the banks have calculated that they can lose as much as 17 billion rand if we just rush in. And so we are being rational to check that when right. you unblock, everything has been checked. So it's mm -hmm. not that we are being malicious or, or careless. We don't know what we are doing. And I'm wondering why the NGOs which are complaining don't actually think of the interests of the country. Time and again, they think of individual interests when they are broader interests of the country. If we become careless and the, the, the banks lose that much money, it affects the whole economy of the country. And mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll agree with me on that. Mm. I agree, Minister, but I think at the same time, these NGOs are sometimes approached by people who are not being malicious as well, the same way you're explaining that the department is not being malicious. And those people probably feel as though they please fall on deaf ears when they go to home affairs departments, and that's why they ask for assistance from these NGOs. Thank you so much, Minister, for speaking yes. to us. Home affairs, Minister. Yes, uh, the, NG <laughs> the NGOs can come. We'll help them. <laughs> Early in, in my yes. term, Marcel, I went to vet legal unit where they were saying we are marrying people uh, willy-nilly. They wanted to take us to court. I said, let's sit down. And we sat down and resolved the issue. There was no court case. We All sat right, down Minister. and resolved it amicably. Yeah, yes. and I think that's what uh, you know. Most of us uh, uh, are hoping would eventually happen. Just uh, a level of working ethic between government and NGOs, because I think at the end of the day, both these entities want the best for South Africans. The Home Affairs Minister, yes. Dr. Aron Motswaledi.